Hi and welcome back to Photo Stuff Rico GR101. In this episode, we will be concentrating on the various autofocus methods. Um, snap focus, we're going to leave to uh, to another video. It's going to get a whole video dedicated to um, snap focus and the various methods of using snap focus. Manual focus, we will touch briefly on at the end of this video, but well, very briefly because it's not implemented very well in the Rico. Uh, so today you can see I'm just doing normal shooting, uh, just a standard color profile, and we are using multi-segment metering, but I've got my focus menu here. So we're going to start at the top here and look at auto, uh, auto area, auto focus. So when we select that one, we don't have much control over where the camera is going to focus. So if I half press, and that's what it's set up to do. You can see it's focusing down to the left down here on the back of these chairs. And I'll try it one more time. And now it's jumped over here and it's focusing in this area. So you don't have much control and it can focus right out to the edges. And that's not always what you want. Okay. So the next autofocus option is one that came recently in a firmware update to address exactly that point there. Uh, where the algorithm tries to select things around the uh, the middle of the screen. So this is auto, for, auto area, auto focus, center. And it's kind of got center weighted. So we've selected that now. And I'm going to try focusing again. And it's got the back of that chair. Try it one more time. And it's uh, got those, yeah, either the edge of the table here or uh, the table legs over there. And there you've got the backs of the chairs again. So as you can see, it's not going right out to the edges. Uh, it's kind of concentrating around the middle, but still not quite predictable. Okay, so that's that one. Now when you want more control, select AF. This gives you the square. Okay, so I'm going to move that square down. And you can move the square around by using the, uh, the rear dial as like a directional pad. If you press and hold OK, then you get this little symbol up here. And that means I can now move the autofocus selector around the screen and I'll set it on the edge of that uh, chair there because um, the Ricoh uses a combination of phase detect and uh, contrast detect, but contrast is stronger. And so, on the edge of that chair, there will be a nice contrasty line that it can focus on. I know it's got the edge of the chair there. Okay. So that is um, autofocus area select. Now, one of the other customizations we did in the previous video was this button here. On the side, I've uh, gotten rid of the movie button, the movie mode on that button there. And one quick press on that, and I get up the touch menu. And now, if I select the top one, I can move that point around. I'll just say OK to that. And now I can move the autofocus area around the screen just by touching. And then half press, and it focuses on the door back there. Move it here. Half press, and it's focused on the back of the chair again. So that's nice, but you also have the option of saying, I want it to move around and focus or move around and focus and shoot. That's the third option there. So let's try that. So now it will move to the place where I point, select, focus, and shoot. So let's take that uh, um, disinfectant bottle over there. And there you go, it's taking a shot, okay? Uh, going back to that menu one more time, we'll just give the, and I'm just show you what I'm pressing. I'm pressing this, of course, here the movie mode button, which nobody uses up there. The other one is snap. So if you press that, it will just go into a full press snap and shoot at whatever distance you're using. But we'll come to that in the next video, okay? So that was that, that those were the basic autofocus modes. There is another one, just get rid of that menu, press the button in again. Now that was like um, a wider area. You've got pinpoint AF as well. This is exactly the same. It's just with a much smaller area. 
and I can press shoot, uh, press focus and shoot uh, in the same way, but it, it uses a, a smaller area to focus on. Okay, so if you want to get very, uh, if you want to get up close to something and make, a, and especially if you're shooting at f2.8, so you, the closer you get, the shallower your depth of field is. So if you want to be more precise, you can uh, use this pinpoint AF, but it's the same as the other one we just looked at. Next up, we have uh, tracking AF. Now let's find something we can track. Uh, I have, um, let's see, I have an umbrella here and I'm going to try to focus on it like that. So it's on, focused on the umbrella. Oh, and I've got to hold my finger down to track. You can see, now I move the umbrella around and the tracking is following the umbrella and I can take a shot, okay? Uh, I got to admit, I don't use that very often at all. Um, I prefer to move myself and the camera uh, to focus on something to track it, okay? Next up, autofocus continuous. Now this is not the same as tracking. We're gonna select that. When I press the button down now, it focuses on the back of the chair. With my finger still half pressed, I move the camera, point it at something else. And without me having to lift my finger off the button and press it again, it refocuses on somewhere else. Okay. So it's constantly refocusing as I move the camera, but it's not tracking anything. So it's not tracking one subject. It's just refocusing wherever I point the camera. Okay. So that is autofocus continuous. I don't use that much either. I must admit. I use the autofocus area, select and snap focus. Those are my primary focusing um, options whenever I'm shooting with a GR3 or GR3X. So next up, ooh, manual focus. Now manual focus is uh, not great. Uh, we don't have enough uh, dials. There's no ring around the lens. So let's just select it and I'll show you what it does. You press okay. This tells you down here, if you now press the, uh, the, um, the flower button for macro focus, then it activates manual focus and then you use the rear dial to change your focus uh, point, uh, the distance of the focus. And then the green bar over here shows you at the same time your depth of field. So I'll bring the camera in a little closer now, like that. I'll press the macro button and now I can change the dial. You can see I'm going up and down on the dial. The further away I focus, uh, the bigger the depth of field gets. So if I start to focus between five meters and the symbol out there, then the green bar gets a little bigger. If I change my depth of field, uh, if I want to change the depth of field, then I can change the aperture. So if I increase the aperture and go up to my favorite street photography aperture setting, which is about 6.3, and then start to manual focus, like this, change the scale, bring that down to about 2.5 meters, which would be about there. Now you can see the, the long green bar is suggesting that at somewhere between one meter and two meters is the start of the acceptable focus and the little tiny yellow bar over here is showing me where critical focus would be. But all this messing about pressing macro button in and turning this dial around, it's, it's not for me. I prefer to uh, use snap focus if I'm not using autofocus. And uh, this wheel is one of the weak points of uh, the Ricoh. You know, everybody talks about um, which cameras get dust on the sensor and that's a problem if you don't have an interchangeable lens camera. And the Ricoh can get dust on the sensor because it moves in and out and can suck dust in when you're switching the camera off. And uh, this re rear dial has been criticized by a lot of people for being a little bit too weak 
and it allows dust to get in under the contacts and uh, for people that shoot full manual with manual ISO then you would normally end up changing your ISO settings with this dial so anyway that's autofocus on the menus here there is another point of autofocus we can just look at and uh, that is we're still in manual at the moment but this one face and eye detect the rico gr3 and the gl3x have a very reasonable face and eye detection option now and uh, they're quite good i think uh, like many cameras in good light this will be uh, quite good it's not up there with the latest Sony A9 or A1 or A7s because it just doesn't have the uh, the uh, the compute uh, the computation power inside, but it's quite good. So leave that on if you're shooting uh, friends and family, and it will do a decent job of detecting faces. Uh, you've got your auto uh, auto focus assistant light here. If you're in the dark, uh, if you're in dark surroundings and it needs some help it will turn on the little light here and uh illuminate the area so you get a little bit of help um using autofocus indoors in poor light in manual focus there is uh, there are a couple of more settings you can make uh or change or, or turn on you've got focus peaking which tries to find the edges of subjects when you're doing manual focus it's not very good and there's also focus magnification you can do that also in auto mode if we go manual focus auto magnification off uh, you can switch that to on so that when i am still in manual focus now so i'm going to press uh, on if i just press that there and then you can see it immediately zooms into the back of the chairs and it has a a, a times four uh, magnification and I think you can press it one more time to get a, uh, a time 16. But like I said, manual focus, not great on this camera. That's just my opinion, by the way. So if anyone else uh, loves manual focus, then do tell us why. Um, another thing you can do with autofocus, we just go back to an autofocus setting here. Just take the normal select autofocus there. Now I'm focused on the back of the chair. If you hold display down, not just a quick press, if you give the display button a quick press, you will just change the amount of information displayed on the back of the screen. But if I hold it down now, you'll see, I'm gonna also focus on the chair, hold display down, and we get automatically a zoom function so we can just check what we are actually focused on. Okay, that's also focus in this episode. And the next one is all about snap focus, street shooting, and the various settings that will be great for using this, uh, one of the uh, most hyped uh, aspects of this camera, full press snap and snap shooting in general, okay? Bye for now, take care. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you're enjoying this. So see ya.